Hi everyone and welcome to my place. If you're looking for inspiration for Valentine's Day, then I am here to help. And I just love red roses. In fact, I love all sorts of, all the roses that there are. Um, for today's design, I'm going to use artificial. It's nearly Valentine's week here. And honestly, the roses are worth so much money. I thought that for demonstrations it would be easier to just use the cheaper version which is the artificial roses. So for the designs today either fresh or artificial and this particular design is for Felicity who lives in Canvas and she's getting married next year on Valentine's Day and she wants some art deco inspired something red, roses etc that she can easily and quickly do herself. So Felicity, I have been off and I have found similar vases. Now if you want me to help you with anything, if you could send me a picture on my, Inst uh, my through to my Gmail at Astor's Place with an image of the vase and sort of an idea of the location and the height and size, then I hope I can help. Anyway, I'm going to do two versions of a design that could be put together as a concept. I've got the small vase and the tall vase. I'm going to start with the taller vase first, so I'll just put that to, to one side. Now, Felicity said she wanted something easy, something that would be visually sort of simple and elegant. So what I've decided is to show you how to do a ball of flowers for the top. Now you can use the round foam balls. Now the, the foam comes in two colors. You've got the gray, which is specifically made for your artificial flowers. It's a harder composition. And then you've got the green, which takes up 10 times its own weight in water. So basically all you do is you get your block or your ball or whatever you're using, just get a bucket of water and just gently drop it in and let it sink to the bottom. You'll know that it's ready when it's the bubbles stop rising to the surface. I usually take it out, give it a little drain on a handy towel and then start. Now if you can't get the block, the balls, and you're stuck with what I've got here, don't panic because it's really easy. The first thing to do is to cut all of your roses or the flowers that you're using to, I usually go about the length, the width of the the container or whatever I'm using. So if you cut everything before you start, it's going to be much, much easier. Now the other thing I like to do is to run like an imaginary line through the center of my design and just think because we're doing a ball, which is, well, it's not a rounded ball, it's going to be a half ball. So think of an orange cut in half. It has to be even. So by doing that line through there, that's going to be like a mirror image. So whatever I do on one side, I'm going to do on the other. And it makes it much easier if you've got all of your materials cut to the same length before you start. Now I did have a Gmail the other day asking about how far to stick the stems in. I stick my stems in about a good inch, I suppose. Just stick that into there and of course working with the artificial is a wee bit easier. If you're using fresh, just make your foam just a little bit higher so that you can stick down and out. Don't go sort of like in like in that direction because what will happen is you'll end up with something that looks like that. It makes it difficult to put your central flowers in. Right, from there, because I've done these, I'm going to go from that side to that side. Now the other thing is I can't tell you exactly how many roses you're going to need because it will depend on uh, how big your ball is when it's going to be completed. So once you've gone around the edge, put one into the center and then it's a matter of transitioning down into the sides. Now, as I said, I like to cut everything before I start. It just means that you don't have to stop and start like I'm doing now, which can be a little bit of a nuisance. So I'll just, if you leave, give me a moment, I will cut all these and I will come back to you. Okay, so everything has all been cut and I'm ready to proceed again. So from there to there, the next lot can go to there and then I'll put another rose into there. Now I've got another coloured rose here, another shade of red, which I wanted to use because I think that if you're using artificials, sometimes just like when you see a real rose, it's got lots of different colours in it because that's what nature does. So what I like to do is, especially for artificials, is use different, combina different combinations of the same colour. So just keep going around and just poking your flowers in until you have your round bald effect. 
and then from there it's just a matter of going around and where you think you need more flowers just put those in until the whole thing is filled up evenly. I put another one into there because I want that little bit of leaf there. I've still got a few left. So as I said, I can't tell you how many you're going to need because it will depend on how many, how big your container is. I really like that rose there, so I'm going to put that into there. And I've got a few left, so I'm going to bring the deeper colour through to the centre. Oh, love it. How easy was that? Didn't take long at all. Okay, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, one more into there. So there we have it. Nice, tight, round ball of flowers. And I, what I love about doing this type of arrangement when using fresh flowers or fresh roses is the smaller the stem of the rose, the longer it will last. And if you think of a big, long, tall stemmed rose, there's a lot of, st of energy the flower has to put into it to suck all of that moisture to the top. So there's version one, Felicity. I hope that that is what you were looking for. Quick, easy to do and very simple. Give me a moment to strike the bench and I'll show you what to do with another topiary version using the smaller vase. Right, welcome back, version two. I really love the lines of this beautiful vase and to me it sort of look, it does look art deco-y. So, you know, depending on what kind of container you look at you're using, think of the height of it. I think that a ball on the top would be really nice, but what if you wanted something a little bit different? With this design, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that off, that raffia there, because I think that that's just a little bit too relaxed and informal for what I consider as a very formally shaped container. Now, take the raffia off, like so, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this lovely metal wire and the colour is, I think that it, the metal is going to work nicely with the red on the outside. It's just a matter of taking that out to one side like so and then just bringing this around and binding it around the top. This is always like a bit of a fiddly job getting this done. Oops, a bit rough there. And making that nice and straight is what I want to do. But what the other thing I want to do, hopefully I can achieve the mission, is to have a nice band of the red at the top, which I think should look quite nice when I'm done. And I want a nice thick band. It does, I don't need it to be too neat. I think that sometimes, you know, just having a little I call it the rough and ready approach, is quite a nice effect, just to give it a little bit of free form. Okay, right, to there. Now where are my snips? Get my snips, cut that about the same length, and then what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to twist it around and bring that round and into there. I'm sure you girls can do it, or boys can do this a little bit neater than what I've done it, but never mind, that'll do. Now, then all I want to do is to push that firmly down into the foam. Now, I'm using wet foam because that was all I had. Now, to finish off the bottom, I'm just going to use a little bit of this moss, and my scissors are so blunt. Oh, oh I must use the whole thing. I don't want all of that. Oh. Oh. Doing flowers means you don't have to go to the gym. And then I'm just going to push that around and into there so that my workings are covered. And there you have two designs that I think could look very, very nice. I'm going to just wipe this away. That could look very, very nice together as a concept on a table and then you could perhaps put a few red candles in a clustered group and run that through your table for your wedding. Hope that's been of assistance to you Felicity. Thanks for watching and I hope I have helped you out with some nice ideas for Throses for Valentine's Day. See you again.